All right. Hello. Um, hi, everybody. Um, Alice Tracy here from Whole Mother Village. Um, super excited. This is our second part of our self care kind of lunchtime series. So um, let's get to it since it's our lunch break for most of us. Um, just a quick introduction. Um, myself, I'm Alice Tracy. I am the owner of Whole Mother Village uh, in West Orange, a space dedicated to everything um, and anything motherhood. And um, this series really is dedicated to um, just self-care. This uh, quarantine life is hard and uh, there are so many things happening in everyone's lives and they're all happening at home. And um, I think everybody feels like me that it's all falling on us. So we were trying to come up with a great way to approach self-care in a very holistic way. So this week we're going to be chit chatting with Alexandra Pito, who is a friend and a colleague um, who um, has her own practice and also works with me at, at Whole Mother Village. And we'll be talking about the, the powerful um, effect of food and nutrition on our, um, on our psyche and on the way we feel. So Alex, thank you so much. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so I'm Alexandra Pato. Um, like Alice said, we work together and I offer nutrition workshops at Whole Mother Village. Um, I'm doing all virtual now, of course, and I also do private counseling through my practice, Thrive and Bloom Nutrition. And I focus on kind of that whole transition through motherhood. So from preconception through pregnancy, postpartum and beyond, and just trying to help women go from, you know, just surviving, just getting by, um, to really prioritizing their needs, their health, uh, their nutrition, so that they can really thrive through motherhood. So that's um, my passion, and I found, you know, since having my own children, that that's it's so powerful. It's game changing when you start, you know, using nutrition and um, food as part of your self care routine. And so, you know, with everything going on right now, I wanted that to be one of the conversations that we had today is how to do that mind shift to approach food and nutrition in a way that really you know, takes care of your body and can promote a better mood, uh, lower stress, and um, better self-esteem, just a better relationship, um, all about that kind of self-compassion. So at its most basic sense, eating food Obviously, the purpose is to deliver nutrients to your body so that you can function. So it is fueling your muscles, your mind, your hormones, every organ system, every reaction in our bodies requires these nutrients as a base. Um, so from a very like scientific level, like that is what we're thinking about with eating, but we are not just, you know, machines that need actual fuel. We're complex humans. And so eating also has this layer of emotion for us. And these emotions can really have a range from person to person or in the same person from day to day, from meal to meal, minute to minute. Um, you may experience, you know, confusion or stress or overwhelm um, surrounding food. It could, you, at times you may be feeling um, like guilt or shame depending on what you're eating. Other times it's exciting and pleasurable, uh, relaxing. So there's such a spectrum of emotions that are surrounding eating. And then on, um, in another regard, when we are not eating, when we're depleted nutritionally, it can really make it harder to cope with the external stressors in our life. Um, you know, if you think about if you end up like skipping meals and going throughout the day and then it just makes it harder to make decisions. It makes it harder to think and to carry out um, complex functions. And so getting kind of back to those basics 
both fueling yourself for like the physical and the mental requirements, but also doing it in a way that is supporting, you know, that positive mood, those positive thoughts. And so we want to try to alleviate some of that stress, some of that overwhelm with how we approach food, how we approach eating. And so the first thing that we want to do is just try to shift our mind. So it's all about um, starting in the mind and how we think about it before we talk about, you know, what you're eating. So it's very common right now to have on some level this kind of delineation into like black and white eating or black and white foods. So, and that can have, you know, really huge implications in many areas of our day or of our lives. So if we think about it, on some level, you may have assigned certain foods as good versus bad. And so typically it's, you know, your vegetables and your lean proteins, which you have like this halo of good, those are good foods. And then you have maybe your favorite foods or, you know, things that maybe are sweeter or saltier, things like that, that are bad foods. And even if you don't like explicitly use those words, a lot of people have uh, in some level these associations. And the thing is that it's really challenging for that not to transfer over to the person consuming it. So it's really hard to draw that line of like, this is a good food and not say, oh, I was good today for eating this food or because I had um, cake, then I was being bad today, or I made a bad choice. And that can be really powerful, um, even if it's not so conscious of a thing that you're saying to yourself, just those emotions, that weight of, okay, I had this food that I associate as less than or bad. And so it can kind of, um, it can influence, you know, that whole cycle of like shame and guilt as we were talking about, and it can also affect, you know, what else you eat throughout the day. On the one hand, some people may have some of those foods and then say, okay, well, I had this one cookie, so why not have all of them and kind of get into that overeating or maybe even binging cycle. Um, whereas others may have that same cookie and have kind of an opposite reaction and say, well, next meal I can only have carrots because I overdid it before. And so both of those extremes can be really damaging psychologically, uh, both the restriction, the restriction and kind of feeling like you're, you're going out of control. Um, and then just emotionally having that baggage of that, what you eat affects like your worth as a person. And so that's really what we're trying to move away from. Um, and instead approaching food as there are no good foods or bad foods, but there's just a whole variety of different foods and they have different functions in our bodies and they taste different. And some meals, some days, we're gonna wanna incorporate some of these foods and others, they're gonna be different ones. And they all have a role to play in our health and in how we feel and there's space for all of them. And so it's really a freeing mindset once you can make that transition so that you don't have these labels and it's just a more inclusive way of approaching food and nutrition. And so part of that is instead of focusing on those labels, it's focusing more on how the foods make you feel. And so that requires an element of mindfulness and attention to what we're eating. So it's really hard to figure out how foods are affecting your body and how they're making you feel if you're going through the day on autopilot in terms of eating. If your primary focus is on you know, work and kids and everything else, all the demands you know, hitting you. And so you're just kind of like eating just to get through the day um, to fuel yourself that can be really challenging because you're not giving yourself the time or the space to, first of all, check in with your hunger, um, check in with your fullness, and check in with how those foods are making you feel. And so it can take a lot of practice because for many of us, 
food is sometimes just a background element um, that we we prioritize everything else above it and so kind of making that transition that shift to focusing more on understanding what foods we might be craving, uh, what nutrients we might need at this time. And then after eating, okay, how did that make me feel? It's a lot of self-reflection too, because everyone reacts differently to different foods. Um, Symptom-wise, like digestive digestion, uh, you may, some people may have different reactions to foods or psychologically, some foods um, you may enjoy a little bit better and some foods may fill you for longer. So it does take um, a little bit of a process of self-discovery getting to this place. And it's something I work with my clients on a lot because that focus and that attention to what we're eating can make all the difference because then you can start to understand what foods are working for your body and kind of building a lifestyle that sustains you and supports your health, um, but also is enjoyable for you and you don't feel like you're restricted and that you're not, we're moving away again from those labels. Um, so kind of this approach isn't the same thing as saying, well, you know, I feel great when I just eat cake all day because if you really are paying attention to your body it probably isn't the case um so healthy foods nur- nutrients um nourishing foods they still have a really important place in this approach um it's just first we kind of want to get that that freedom that making peace with the food uh set in stone and making sure that we've got that emotional piece it actually is a little bit more important to get that set because that takes a lot of practice um and oftentimes we're unlearning years of you know messages that we've heard from society or from ourselves about we have to eat certain ways and so unlearning that is a really critical process. And then we can start talking about, okay, so what are the particular nutrients that your body needs right now? You know, with my work, we, we are often talking about, okay, what stage are you in motherhood? Are you trying to conceive? Are you pregnant? Are you postpartum? Are you breastfeeding? Are you taking care of young toddlers? Where are you? What are your nutrient needs? And we can use that information to kind of build out what foods we can have as your, you know, your options um, to incorporate. And we want to approach this from like the inside out. So it's not saying, okay, I know I need more omega-3, so I must eat fish to get that. There's some element of understanding the nutrients that you need, but you also want to bring that mindfulness into it. You want to bring that awareness and say, when I have these foods, how do they make me feel? And kind of bringing that intrinsic motivation into the conversation is really important because it's so much harder to, you know, have follow something when the only reason that you're eating a certain way is because you're supposed to do it. That's just never sustainable. Maybe you'll do it for a couple of weeks, but if it's not something that's really meaningful for you and you can feel um, the difference when you're eating in this way or living and practicing this uh, mindfulness uh, process, then it's not going to last. And that's what we want. We want to make sure that it's something that is going to continue to support you and be a long-term rewarding process. And so Alice and I were talking about um, just, you know, the stress of everything going on right now. And so we thought it would be really relevant to talk about some of those nutrients that have a direct role in how our body processes stress and reacts to um, certain stressful situations, which boils down to um, our, our chemical messengers that are sent throughout the body, the neurotransmitters and the hormonal signals that are involved in the stress response. There are nutrients that are required in creating 
the variety of these hormones and in making sure our body is sensitive to them and can respond accordingly. So I can share some of those nutrients with you and you can, you know, I'll share where you can find them in foods and they can kind of just be added to your list as some options. You know, if you're feeling a certain way um, that they, you can include them into your diet. And so the, the, the foundation with most things nutritionally, and we're finding out most things health-wise in general, um, it all kind of starts in the gut, in the digestive system, in uh, that microbiome, your bacteria that lives in your gut. By supporting that environment, we are able to better support the hormonal balance in our body because a lot of the hormone synthesis starts in the digestive system. So the three main factors for a healthy digestive system, for a help, healthy gut microbiome, are fiber, probiotics, and hydration. So the fiber, um, you'll plant-based foods are the best source for fiber in the diet. So thinking your whole grains, your fruits and your vegetables, your beans, um, seeds, and even nuts have some fiber these foods are going to kind of be that food for the bacteria that lives there and keep things moving appropriately through your digestive system um, so that you're able to absorb the nutrients that you need and things aren't you know, sitting there and making you uncomfortable, feeling bloated. And then probiotics are the actual bacteria. So incorporating that live bacteria into your digestive system through yogurt or other fermented fermented foods like kefir, kimchi, um, certain pickles. Those are some kombucha. Those are some probiotic rich foods. And then hydration. Um, sometimes we kind of forget that piece, but if you're having a lot of fiber, it's not going to move through your system unless you give it, you're giving it that hydration, that fluid to kind of move through. And so we definitely want to make sure we're hydrating enough during the day, which again, when things are stressful, we're busy. Sometimes that's the first thing to go. So bringing some mindfulness to hydration is really helpful. And then some vitamins also are really crucial in the creation of the signals that are sent throughout the body for managing um, stress. And so B vitamins are really helpful here. Um, there's been some research that certain B vitamins like folate, they can actually um, affect how well antidepressant medication works in your body. So if you have low levels of folate, um, there's some research that shows that medication may not be as effective. So we definitely wanna make sure that our nutrients are at a good level um, because clearly it has a direct relationship on our mood and our ability to process some of these emotions. So folate is a nutrient that's found in foods like leafy greens, avocado, asparagus, um, beans as well. A lot of your fruits and vegetables are, are gonna come in handy for so many of these categories, um, which is why that we, we hear about them so often. But um, another of the beneficial nutrient is omega-3 fatty acids. Talked about that a little bit earlier, but these can kind of help make your body a little bit more sensitive to some of the signals. And there's also been some research that lower levels of omega-3s in the body has also been linked to um, potential higher levels of depression. So again, it's important to incorporate these into um, our diets and the best sources are gonna be in the fatty fish. There's some levels in eggs um, if they're fortified or um, you can supplement as well. And then um, antioxidants is kind of the last one I wanted to hit on. And again, fruits and vegetables, eating a variety of colors will help you make sure that you're getting the variety of different antioxidants, but they really reduce the damage um, that oxidation causes in the body and prevents um, that or that damage could affect how our body is responding to those hormonal signals. So we want to make sure that we're keeping our body in good repair and those antioxidants can be really helpful. So again, just the whole range of fruits and vegetables are great for that. And then just in terms of how we're eating, 
eating consistently throughout the day, um, as you know, you've probably experienced, if you go too long, just the irritability, that hanger um, can be really powerful um, if you're not eating enough. And so that's, I'm personally affected by that. And so I know that I need to have that consistent fuel of a balanced meal, having not just carbs because that typically has like a quick energy spike, but then going to be hungry in an hour. And so I need that protein, need those healthy fats so that it can be sustainable energy and keep me in a good mood. <laughs> um, so that's, um, those are some of the, the nutrients that are top of mind when thinking about, you know, mood regulation and um, staying on top of the stress response. And so, you know, if anyone has anything any questions or anything to share, like personal experiences about either like the mindset around food or eating certain foods and how they affect how you feel, definitely open to discussion. Thank you so much, Alexandra. This is so interesting and I'm loving talking about it. I know I've been to a couple of your workshops and they're always just are incredibly mind opening. Um, one of the things that I'm noticing here and um, it's, you know, it's, the good foods versus bad foods, I mean, they really fall into those categories, right? Like everything that you just said that is like beneficial are the things that we consider to be good, right? Mm -hmm. Like you did not notice, mention butter and, you know, cake or any of those things. But I guess what you're saying is it's the relationship and then how we're kind of reacting to it, the reactivity to, um, to uh, um, all of that. Um, I also, um, you know, just thinking about this is that, you know, like, food is so connected in our minds to our physical appearance too. So it's not only, I think only like bad or good. It's also like, what do I need to eat to fit in a certain mold, right? That like I have created for myself or the society has created for myself, mm -hmm. but for me or for other, other, uh, other people. And I do have to say that, um, that has been definitely challenging for me because I am home. I'm not moving a whole lot. I am kind of, you know, in and out of, in the backyard, but I'm not as physically active. And I think I'm even, you know, as a, as a American woman, I'm not particularly active unless I really, you know, find time for it. This has just gone to a completely new level, right? New level of nothing doing really physical, physically at all. Um, and it, it does translate into my thinking about food and it does put a lot of pressure on me. So um, you know, this definitely has been um, challenging, but I love the idea of like knowing that there are some foods that do have the ability to really help me kind of, you know, feel better. And, um, you know, uh, this is, this is great. Thank you so much. Grace, do you have any questions? No, I, I love that point about <laughs> feeling angry. And I mean, really just even trying to be so patient with the kids and then also like forgiving with yourself <laughs> and you know if you do end up reaching for a piece of candy because you realize you forgot to eat for four hours but you need to take the kids somewhere or you just made them a snack so you can't stay in the kitchen any longer <laughs> so <laughs> I think you're right that's important the mindset of just you know it is what it is just move on just because you had a bad snack doesn't mean you're a bad person and I think that does kind of like shift to that mindset sometimes yeah definitely yeah you see the the ramifications of how you eat in pretty much every area and so yeah giving yourself that that grace that forgiveness um just that freedom to be a person be a human and know that we're not perfect and um it is about trying to just, you know, take it one meal at a time, one snack at a time, and trying to move forward from there. Um, I have one more thing, um, Alexandra, before you go, um, mm -hmm. before we sign off. So knowing what you just shared with us, is there something quick that you can just kind of recommend us? Because we 
all three here, we're moms, and I'm sure that many people that will watch this are moms that have children. We have husbands at home. I feel like cooking is absorbing just my entire being these days, just cooking or preparing meals a day. Any kind of tips on like quick, just, just preparing meal is a stressful experience for me, and I'm sure it is for everybody, right? Not, I'm not even talking about shopping and trying to get the food into your house right now, but let's just, you know, like in terms of planning meals, cooking meals, like do you have any sort of quick tips on, you know, mindfully and healthy kind of, you know, approaching the food right now? Yeah, um, so in terms of trying to make it as, as quick as possible. Some of my favorite strategies are sheet pan meals, you know, something that you can put, you can think about the balance and put, okay, a protein, some veggies for fiber, um, put a carb on there too, maybe some potatoes. You, you lay it out all on one pan and flavor it however you want into the oven and, you know, 25 minutes. So it's not like trying to do the stove top, which can be hard, especially if you hold, you know, a baby there too. Um, so I love the sheet pan because you, you prepare it all, put it in, you can walk away and do something else for 25 minutes and then come back and eat. Um, the other tip that I always do is just making extra. So like double the batch, so then you can use it for lunches or you can use it, repurpose it for, you know, putting it a twist on it for another meal. Um, and again, you know, having that in the, in the background about like the balance, what components am I going to put in here that's going to make it taste good and make it, it last, make it sustainable. Um, those are, you know, what you want to be thinking about when you're putting it together and then kind of just figuring out how to make it doable. And so those are two of my top tips. Thank you so much. And one quick question uh, that it's, uh, came up this morning. In terms of nutrients, and I know me and you, we have talked about this before. Um, in terms of, you know, we're struggling all getting food into the house. Um, so in terms of fresh, frozen, canned, where are we standing in terms of like nutrients, health aspect of meals or foods or vegetables that we're getting um, in the supermarket assuming everybody kind of shops to try to like fill up the house and not have to leave for as long as they can. Um, you know, like, is it all the same? Is there a priority like in terms of, you know, just the, the health aspect and the nutrients, you know, where are we? Um, so it depends depending on the food. So certain foods even have even higher levels of nutrients when they're canned. Um, tomatoes jump out as like they're their lycopene value and it's like the tomato sauce or like sun-dried tomatoes is actually higher than like a fresh tomato um, whereas there's some other foods that the canning process may diminish the nutrients a little bit um, but really my approach and philosophy is whatever way you can get your fruits and veggies in is great you know do what's what you're able to do um, and frozen's amazing, fresh is amazing, canned can be great too. You just, for canned, you just want to check the label, you know, lower salt when possible, or um, if they're uh, canned like fruit, sometimes it's canned in syrup versus in like water, 100% juice. So just looking at that and going for the less sugar, the less salt options um, will make it closer to its original value. You can still have those other foods if you enjoy them, um, but if you're looking for like the uh, comparison to make it as equal to um, your standard fresh fruit. Those are some of the things that you would look at. But yeah, any way that you can get them in is great. You know, again, we're all about making this realistic and um, just more approachable for everyone. Thank you so much, Alexandra. This was wonderful, super informative. Um, definitely lots of ideas in here to uh, just kind of bring into everyday life. Um, I'm very grateful for you spending time with us today. Thank you so much. Hopefully we'll be back with some um, more fun discussions about food and um, self-care and um, just, you know, motherhood. Yeah, my pleasure. It was great to chat with you all. Thank you so much. All right.